This is the Polynesi dress designed by Yves Saint Laurent for the House of Christian Dior for their Spring Summer 1960 collection. So this is a haute couture garment, meaning that it is handmade and it's made to a specific person's measurements. It also means that it was made by a French couture house under guidelines which were set out at the time of the Chambre Syndicale de la Haute Couture, who regulate the haute couture industry. So Yves Saint Laurent was a French fashion designer. He was born in Oran, Algeria in 1936, and growing up he actually wanted to be a theatrical designer, but was encouraged by his family to pursue fashion design. At the age of 17, he moved to Paris and enrolled at the Champs Syndicale de la Haute Couture to study there. Shortly after winning multiple prestigious awards, he was introduced to Christian Dior by the editor of French Vogue at the time. He was only 18 and he was hired almost instantly. After Christian Dior's death in 1957, Yves Saint Laurent was made the creative director of the house at just 21 years old. Yves Saint Laurent went on to open his own fashion house in 1962 after leaving Christian Dior. He is most known for his designs such as his safari jackets, his sharp-shouldered blazers, his Mondrian collection, and probably most notably the smoking suit, which was designed for women. And this really set a precedent for power dressing in the decades to come, as well as androgynous fashion. And he's also really known as a designer for reflecting some of the political and social changes that were happening in the 1960s and 70s and helping to empower women through their clothing. The collection that this dress comes from is his Spring Summer 1960 collection and this was titled Silhouette of Tomorrow, very fittingly. This type of design people might not typically associate with Yves Saint Laurent. It might be a bit of surprise that it was designed by him. He's more so known for his blazers and suits in this kind of dress. So the dress is made from a silk zebeline. Zebeline is normally a wool made from animal fur, but in this case, it is a stiff, soft silk. It's also got embellishment with pink and orange beading, as well as sequins, diamantes, pieces of coral and gold, silver and bronze threads. So part of the bodice is embellished with coral um, and this has been assessed by our conservation department and it's suspected to be a precious coral calarium rubrum. This is found in various parts of the world but largely in the Mediterranean. It has a really extensive dress history that dates back centuries. This type of coral isn't commonly used in fashion now due to overexploitation of trade, rising sea temperatures and overfishing. It is now a protected and endangered life form. So the dress is a really unique example of craftsmanship. The construction of the bodice itself is relatively simple with princess seams down the front here, a high round neckline, three quarter sleeves, and the back has this center back zip fastening. The bodice also has boning inside, which helps keep its structure. The skirt is constructed in two tiers, with the top tier being cut in panels here. And this really helps emphasize the shape of the skirt, as well as the zebeline fabric being thick enough to hold its shape and the sheen of the fabric emphasizing this even more. It's also slightly gathered at the waist and has this detachable bow belt, which comes undone at the front here. However, what really brings it to life is the embellishment on the bodice. So the way that the bodice was constructed, if we look really closely, we can see that there's a layer of netting underneath. So the embroidery is done on the net, not on the bodice fabric itself. Part of the embroidery is done with these gold threads, which is a flat gold thread wrapped around a core of other threads. And you can see really closely in areas where this is coming undone, but it does give an insight into how this kind of piece would have been created. This 
this dress would be quite a typical example of formal women's uh, evening wear in 1960. It was still very uncommon to see hemlines above the knee and this silhouette was quite typical of the time. That being said, it's definitely on the cusp of new styles uh, coming into fashion in the decade. If you were to compare it to Dior's bar suit in 1947, which is just over a decade before this was designed, we can see that the waist is still quite emphasised. However, our eyes are drawn to the fullness of the hips in the skirt, and then it drops down into a much more rectangular uh, shape. If you were to compare it to Yves Saint Laurent's Mondrian dress and just five years later in 1965, you can see that the two dresses are very different in design and aesthetic. However, you can see a progression in the silhouette from this example to the Mondrian dress in the rectangular shape of the skirt. We also have documentation that the wearer of the dress was on an international best dress list in 1964. So we have these shoes in our collection which appear to match the dress. They were donated by a different person, however, if we look at the similarities in the design, the embellishment, as well as the materials that are used, we can safely assume that they are intended to match. We can see it's got this very similar colour oyster silk, however, in this case it's a grosgrain silk. It's also got very similar embellishment materials with the coral, the orange and pink beads, sequins, diamantes, as well as gold, bronze and silver metallic threads. So these shoes weren't designed by Yves Saint Laurent. They were designed by Roger Vivier, who was a French luxury shoe designer. And he worked with many couturiers from Elsa Scaparelli to Christian Dior, as well as Yves Saint Laurent once he had opened his own fashion house. He's actually the only one of Dior's collaborators to have his credit imprinted on every design, which you can see inside the shoe here. So this kind of shoe, we can see it's got a pointed turned up uh, toe and quite an exaggerated curved heel, which is what we call a Louis heel. And this is named after King Louis XV of France, as this type of heel was quite popular during his reign. So you can see you've got quite a curved heel and then it's slightly flared out at the bottom here. So Roger Vivier is also credited with inventing the comma heel, which gets its name from its really curved heel shape, as well as reinventing the stiletto heel in the 1950s with the steel rod. We can see that it brings the ensemble to an entirely new level and having such an extravagant and lavish dress really needs the right kind of shoe to complement this and Roger Vivier was perfect for this kind of design. So this ensemble is a really great example of beautiful craftsmanship and detail in design, as well as showcasing East Saint Laurent's push for and preference for modernity in his designs. It also showcases just how influential Yves Saint Laurent was as a designer, as well as his uh, position at the forefront of the fashion industry. Mm -hmm.